That's right, the app that probably proved that you didn't need an Apple Vision Pro is back with some updates. Let's get into it. The first thing you notice if you fire up the Spatial app again after these updates is the UI improvements. It's come a long way since just trying to emulate Vision OS. Everything looks just a little bit more crisp, a little bit more shiny, and they've even added a logo to the middle of the screen. When you resize a window, it used to have a little bit of lag there, but you get a nice logo now that kind of masks that kind of stutter that we saw when the app first launched. It's really nice. And the launcher, one of the more defining features of this app, looks better than ever. You can see there's a little bit of a 3D hover effect here. Pretty cool. And everything feels just a little bit more snappy. All of the multitasking is just as intact as it was before. And then there's the widgets. The last time we talked about the Spatial app, a lot of these weren't even live yet. So I was excited to see these extra widgets like the sticky notes and the to-do list are now available for use. And I think last time I forgot to show you this, the clock actually has a few different looks. You don't have to just use the base standard look of the clock. You can cycle through a few backgrounds if the plain look isn't your thing. And there's also been some quality of life improvements. I think early on, it was a little bit hard to open and close things like the app drawer and the keyboard. The app library and the keyboard now open very seamlessly while tapping the buttons. When I first covered this app, it was a little bit clunky, I'll admit. I actually had to scrap some footage because I was looking like a goofball trying to open these and close these smoothly. And finally, finally, they have added saving your window locations after closing the app. So when you open the Spatial app back up, all of your windows are exactly where you left them. One thing while using the Spatial app that was a little bit frustrating is that sometimes things would get a little bit scrambled or if I had too many things going on and I just kind of wanted to start back at square one, you can go to the settings and delete all of your windows and start back at zero. The Spatial app has also taken advantage of MetaOS's availability to remove the boundary requirement. This allows you to freely move about your home and still use the Spatial windows wherever you might be. I'm so glad that MetaOS actually added this because you don't really get that free flowing Apple Vision Pro if you keep bumping into a grid boundary wherever you go. And then the movement of windows has been improved. You can push and pull windows back and forward just like you can in Apple Vision Pro. And it's easy. It's not a lot of grabbing and pulling. You don't feel like you're trying to reel in a fish or anything like that. And then there's some productivity things that have been added here. There's a copy and paste now. So if you're actually doing some work inside of the Spatial app, these updates will make it a little bit easier. They've also added environments. Now I know it's really exciting to use pass through, but sometimes you don't really need it, right? And I think sometimes it can be a little bit easier in your eyes if you actually don't use pass through. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of these. Uh, here's the green nebula. It's kind of like being in deep space somewhere. And then here's clear. It's just a blue gradient. It's kind of nice. It's easy on the eyes. There's cloudy, nice pink hues there. And sunset. This has to be one of my favorites. It's just pleasing and calming overall. And then orbit. This one is not for those who might have an issue with heights. And cartoon. This one reminds me of the movie What Dreams May Come with Robin Williams. I don't know if you've seen that, but it reminds me of that one. I like it. And the night environment is great for watching kind of dark themed movies. It just adds to the feel. Here's me watching uh, the first episode of Penguin. And they haven't said this, but this is just kind of a theory that I have. I'm thinking that actually using an environment instead of pass-through might save a little bit of battery life on your Quest. I haven't been able to try or test that out, but it's just a theory I have. In addition to those quality of life features, there have been some updates to the keyboard. You have keyword suggestions and an input field right above the keyboard so you can see what you might have typed into a particular text area. Some invisible updates include updates to the browser version so we don't run into so many CAPTCHA issues or generally other compatibility problems. And you know how we do it here in the construct. Because you're watching this video, 
The team over at The Spatial App is offering you, viewers of The Construct, 30% off of the app for the next three weeks. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Spatial App team. I highly recommend you check this out if you haven't picked it up already. If you do, the link is in the description and don't forget to like and subscribe. If you pick up The Spatial App the last time but you haven't opened it recently, I suggest you do. Maybe this video will give you an excuse to hop back in there. If you picked it up for the first time, I hope you use the deal and we'll see you here next time in The Construct. Peace.